Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Follow Your Passion podcast. I'm your host, Erwin Wils. I'm a mindset business strategist and founder of Millionaire Life Strategy. In this podcast, I'm interviewing my clients and other entrepreneurs that are following their passion and make a good living out of it. When you want to know more about me or what I can do for you, check out my website, millionairelifestrategy.com. But first, check out this episode of Follow Your Passion. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Follow Your Passion. Uh, let me introduce my guest of today. Her name is Asmita Jason. Asmita is the founder of uh, Launch Boosters, helping clients launching courses online with done-for-you services and masterminds. However, she started out as a mechanical engineer with a master's in business analytics and two years of experience in operations. She has also been a purchase coordinator and a relationship manager, and now she has running, been running her own business for over four years and counting. Asmita has a sweet spot for helping other mums succeed and reach a consistent five-figure months. So welcome, Asmita. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for the warm welcome and the intro. Yeah. So Asmita, tell me about this This journey you've been on because you started out as a mechanical engineer uh yeah. how did you how did you become this uh this launch boosters uh expert so while doing engineering like after mechanical engineering i worked into operations so that was the hard phase of life when you manage projects and all but at the same time exciting and since childhood i always wanted to have something of my own but what of my own was not fixed so there was a desire. I want to have something of my own. I want to help people. And as I went exploring digital marketing, I had a hobby business. So for which I started exploring digital marketing and I realized many women needed help with digital marketing. Mm -hmm. So I started helping out these women into digital marketing. That was way back in 2018. So at the same time, learning about it, helping people. So I started as a freelancer. And over the period, then I was like, okay, it's no more to be a freelancer now. I need to have my own social media marketing agency. So that moved on to a social media marketing agency where I was supporting uh, online female entrepreneurs with all the marketing needs, especially with Facebook and Instagram. Then as I went on working with these women, I realized major struggles were with moms when they wanted to come into coaching and a lot of things go behind a launch. So that overwhelmed, that burnt out. And my major clients were from this sector. So I thought, okay, this is the good sector and this is the good market that I need to help people with. And then I refined into those services and that is how the launch boosters evolved right from being into corporate to freelancing to social media agency and a launch agency right now. Nice, nice. And I, when I'm correct, then you even pivoted your business even more a little bit, right? Yeah. So tell me about that. So uh, one thing here is when I had started, right, I was as a freelancer and I was serving anyone. So I was burnt out. So that was the case in 2020 when I really wanted to give up on business because there were so many things happening and I was working literally 16 to 20 hours a day, which was not the reason I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to help people to create a life of freedom, but I was not having that. So it, it didn't make any sense. Like you are not enjoying freedom and you say that you're going to help others to have that freedom. So that was a time you know, of great evaluation into my business, going back, see what's going wrong. And then I started refining refining my services, refining my niche, whom I want to work with. And that is, I could say, entire new journey started. Okay, whom I want to work with. This is the specific audience I want to work with. This is the outcome I want to give them. This is the transformation. And that's how right now, if you see my business is very less work, but creating a lot more impact than what it was before. Nice, nice. And how did you come up with this this special needs of helping moms? Because a lot of female entrepreneurs, but what, why the focus on moms? And you say other moms, so you're a mom yourself, right? Yeah. So the one thing here, you know, like in 2020, as I said, I was pregnant. Like my agency was doing really great. And at the same time in 2021, when I was pregnant, I was expecting my son. It was very hard for me. Like I had a team, uh, but at the same time, my team required me to review each and everything. So business was dependent on me. 
and that is the time i realized oh it is not like how much moms may have with difficulty i had to shut down my business for few months because i couldn't do it and then it was just in pregnancy and when i was thinking okay what will happen after my baby comes up i'm going to have much much lesser time so that is the time when i started exploring about other moms talking to other moms and i realized everyone was going through the same phase many of them had stopped their career or paused their business with the expectation that some day they will come back and that some day had never come back couple of women like couple of moms whom i spoke with they had the kids maybe 5 years 6 years but still they were like we are just trying to find that time we are just trying to do this this is becoming hard for us and i had those pain points because i had started my journey as a mother and which was a huge transition a mm-hmm. complete free life to a mother's life and you go through the same thing i said okay this is it i want to help mothers because if i needed that help mothers are there you know they need my help right now and i am in a position to help them so why not niche down only to mothers and help them you know achieve whatever freedom they want and especially not give up on their dreams because that is nice. the phase when most of them give up on their dreams yeah i i had a discussion with a lot of uh female entrepreneurs as well that uh, when you're a mom um everything goes to second place because you put your child uh, your 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 child at first first place you know and it's hard to yeah. if you if you started your dream and you uh, become a mother then to put a dream on on a side track right and that's yeah it, it, so it it's beautiful that you help the other women you know to to combine uh staying true to your dream and being a, a mother at the same time yeah this is exactly i want to help mothers with you know i don't want them to side track because we get this life only once we live it only once and if we have to put our dreams aside i know that motherhood is a very nice journey like it's a blessed journey but at the same time we shouldn't compromise on our dreams that we have for our life nice and uh, how, how does it um what's your experience uh, because you you're now a mother for two years so you have a two year old son Uh, how does it combine your your business and your motherhood so right now uh, with the lifestyle and with the business i'm creating i get a lot of time with my son so that is what i try you know like the programs i have or the launches i have or the client calls i have i try to map out in a way that i work only like 4 to 5 hours a day so that i have a lot of time with my son so that's how i'm going on and most of the things i try to involve my son along with it like if it's calls where i'm not required on videos or if it's some shooting or some posts i try to involve him or he is playing aside like besides me and i work on my thing but there are times like those 3 to 4 hours a day where i keep him away from me and i focus on my business but if you ask me about the journey it's really going good initial days were like Uh, you know uh, when you are that mother and you feel no i cannot keep my child as- like away from me not even from one hour so i was kind of that and like 16 minutes go up and then i used to go to my son but now it's not like that as the journey has evolved i'm like okay business is at one place family is at one place uh, family does take the first priority but business is not getting side tracked or is not getting going behind it has its own time slot it has its own uh, i could say you no know, own space in my world right now Nice, nice. And as I heard you say also that um and I think that's important for other uh, business owners as well. If you start your business, you know, um it's one of my coaches said that uh, you need to have an exit plan. Meaning, you know, uh, not that you're going to 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 start the business only to sell it someday, but you want the business to to uh, run uh without you being there right that's the ideal yeah. situation uh because uh then you can focus on the things that matter to you you know you can if in your in your case for instance you can spend more time with your son and your family or you can explore new markets or you can uh pick uh, pick the cherries you know which clients you definitely want to work with or you can yeah. uh create partnerships with other companies that can strengthen each other um so ideally you make yourself redundant right yeah. and i think that was one of the uh roadblocks you run into that the company became dependent on you and when you had your pregnancies um well 
the, the business was was almost down, so to speak, you know, because yeah. you couldn't uh, edit or, or uh, check and manage uh, things. So with that experience that you started, you pivoted your business, you know, you, you made some adjustments. Um, what have you learned from that and how, how are you applying it in your current business? So one most important thing I learned was uh, I had like the thought that I have to do everything. So like I have to wear all the hats. Uh, so whatever came across me, maybe it was applying for a podcast interview or making a Facebook post. I was like, I have to do it. It's my business. I have given up that thought. I have taken like I have learned a lesson. I have to prioritize tasks where I am required rest all tasks are delegated to my team or I just outsource them. So now when I was new, I didn't have a team. I used to just outsource it. It's okay to pay some part of money to people who are expert in that rather than, you know, like trying to wear all the hats, buying courses and figuring out. So this is, this was me, you know, like one year ago, I was like that, oh, why should I pay someone? Instead, I could get this course, learn it and do it. But that takes you to burnt out. So right yeah. now it's like, no, this is not my expertise. I'm just going to outsource this. This is not my expertise. I'm going to outsource this. Or this is what my team can take it. So I have pivoted it so much that my team needs me hardly 30, to, 30 minutes to one hour a day. That's for the review. It's like, I don't sit with them, but it's for the review. But it's obviously not like before, you know, every step there was in review, everything, I, every minute thing they do, I had to review it. Now it's not like that. It's just the final outcome, just five minutes review and they are good to go on their own. Perfect. So that was biggest learning for me to remove me from my business operations and have that free time to work on my business and expand. And that is how I'm able to scale now. Otherwise, I couldn't have been able to scale. Yeah, exactly. And that's that you've put it very beautifully indeed. So um, especially at the beginning, you know, uh, you want to do everything yourself because spending money doesn't seem right at that moment. But that's, that's yeah. still... A, I would call it an employee mindset, right? Uh, yeah. And when you're an entrepreneur, you have to make different decisions, you know, because your time is money as well. And uh, sometimes I give the example that that um, they say you have to write blogs, right, for your website. And some people aren't great at writing blogs, you know. It takes them five to six hours to write a blog because to write something they review it, they're not happy with it, so they rearrange it. And it, it can take up to five, six hours before they produce a blog. And, but they think, you know, if I, uh, it, 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 it doesn't make sense to, to outsource this to somebody, you know, to write something that you can do yourself. But if you outsource it to somebody, and let's say that person can write four blogs, right, for $400, right? I think, well, that's four hundred dollars. I can keep in my pocket, but if you're only taking six hours to write one block, then four blocks will, uh, well, will take you at least twenty hours. And if you multiply that with your hourly rate, you're you're much more expensive than the, those four hundred dollars you're using to outsource it. And probably the quality you'll be getting is better because that person is an expert in it. Yeah, this is exactly what I realized, you know, like, especially in terms of all this Facebook live and the group lives I do. I was like, I have to design my own banner. I have to you know, go and talk to these people. I have to do this. But the outcome, I, I could only do like two live sessions a month. But now when my team does everything, I just have to present on that live session, which is my expertise and rest is their expertise or I outsource. I'm able to, you know, like scale it to five times or 10 times. I could even say 10 times than what I was doing before. So yeah. I was never calculating that my time had a money because it was my business. I was like, no, I'm saving money. So that fact was in my mind. I'm saving. If yeah. someone gave me a quote of $500, okay, if I do this task, I save $500. So I was of that mindset. And I used yeah. to literally even calculate how much amount I saved that month. Okay, that quotation came, I saved $500. This quotation came, I saved $500. But at the end of the month, by this calculation, I used to save maybe thousand, thousand five hundred dollars, but I used to waste around four to five thousand dollars, which I could have generated revenue. And yeah. this calculation and this comparison, I was like, oh, I'm saving money, but at the same time, it's like I'm just losing my entire business. 
to save this amount. Exactly. Now you 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 forget that the time you're spending on tasks you're not good at are wasted against the time you can spend helping your clients and being paid for that. And that's yeah. that's the difference. Yeah. Nice. So um could you share um uh, a fun story of a client you helped that that still comes to mind, you know, that it might be a perfect client, or maybe that you you made a mistake and you learned from it, or so one thing here, like when you say a fun client, I had a client who had signed up with me for a mentorship. She wanted to grow her Instagram. And that time was the time when it didn't have a qualifying process. So she signed up. She was a very good as a human being and even as a client. But she signed up and everything calls were on Zoom. And then she's like, I don't know how to use laptop. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you have paid me for these classes and you're telling me that you don't know how to use laptop. And how can I train you for that? Then she's like, okay, uh, if you could manage something on a phone call. Then the next thing was, I don't know how to use email. I don't know how I could get these links. I'm like, oh, fine. I have to go back two months and train you everything. But I took it as a challenge. Uh, like I, I didn't, I didn't want it to disappoint her because she was very good as a person. And that was the time when I didn't have set boundaries in my business. That is why there was no qualifying process. So I had to spend almost two months to get her technologically literate, you know, like how to use laptop, how you could use these online calls, how you could use Google Calendar, how you could use this. And I was training her like this, you know, do you see something in the right side? Do you see that X mark? Okay, if you close that, it's going to close. Do you see this plus mark? If you click that, it's going to open a new tab. So literally those calls, uh, now I can laugh at those, but they were kind of a big, I could say a pain point for me. I had to literally go through this, like every simple thing. I couldn't say that open new tab because she didn't know that. I had to say, can you see up? If you scroll there, you see something as plus, click that plus, that new tab is going to come. And every day I had to repeat the same thing. So Hmm. that was the moment which was a very hard client for me to work with initial few months. But later on, this client continued with me for almost two years. Ah, and nice. she become a tech pro. And now, uh, even though we are not working together, but whenever she messages me or she calls me, she has become a complete technology pro. And she's like, Asmita, it is you who has taught me all the technology. And she is using all this clubhouse and this and that, all the recent software tools. Uh, like, in fact, she had bought a MacBook and she's like, I, I figured out everything on my own, you know, like from the Dell laptop to MacBook, I figured out everything on my own. So that was a good client relation, but definitely not a good client to have if you want to scale kind of thing. Uh, but it was a good relation. And yeah. I, I always remember, it. I'll always remember it. No matter where I go in my business journey, I will always remember this client, uh, like two, three learnings here, not to follow the qualifying process or maybe sign unaligned clients and just have that because that literally led me to burn out. You know? Like, oh, I, I was literally getting fed up to go on the calls, but I couldn't show that on calls. I had to be good. So that was a nice. different case of journey. Yeah. yeah and I, I can imagine that you learned a lot from that. And yeah. uh, what, what I always say that uh, the reason why you need a coach or a, a mentor is you don't see your own blind spots, right? Yeah. And and what you just shared, you know, some things we, we take for granted are so obvious that we assume the other person knows it. And that's not always the case. Just like you said, you know, she wanted you to to help her. But, you know, it's my expertise, no problem at all. And the first thing you heard, but how do I use a laptop? How do I open it? You know, how do I start yeah. it? And uh, so I, I can imagine the shock you were in when, when you heard it for the first time. But yeah. at least you took up the challenge and that that's beautiful. And, and you learn a lot from it. Because uh, explaining something to somebody else uh, makes you learn it uh, twice. So, yeah, and that's that's yeah, that's that's wonderful. But um, it, it also uh, make me curious that how come she asked you to help a grower Instagram if she wasn't familiar with with um, software and and laptops and stuff like that. So she was like, she's a makeup artist, a renowned makeup artist here. But before COVID, they had everything physical. So she used to just give ads to 
uh, the online portals and things were working out but especially during covid time when everything was shut down she had to come online and that is the time she realized she come online uh, she created an instagram account and actually she hired first social media marketer that person you know a guide misguided her and made her buy bot followers so she landed up purchasing 25k bot followers and everything was stuck there and she was like really looking out for a trustworthy person who could help her and someone recommended her my name because i was active on instagram and because she approached me on instagram i thought that she may with technology sound and everything and she already has a account with 25k followers Yeah. So I, I I just assumed it, but when we started connecting and everything went on, I realized okay they were bot followers. Someone had misguided her. Everything was messed up in her journey. So things started revealing as we went on closely, like working together. And now you got a selection process. Yeah, now I have a selection process. So whenever someone applies, I first go through their social profiles. I see what they do, like how they are doing, what's their business about, whether I can really help them. because many times what i have realized uh, when we say that i am a business freedom coach or i am a business coach many uh, mums approach and they are like i really want something to earn money and i'm like okay this is not a get rich quick something it's not a get rich quick scheme it is your business you should have some expertise you should have some experience you cannot just come some day and say that i want to start a business i, I cannot help you in such cases it's your expertise maybe it's what education you have taken or maybe what work you have done it's okay if there's gap in between 5 years 10 years gap but at least you have this expertise so this is where you know i have that colleague like qualification process in place so i don't land up with these people uh, so when i literally had those free strategy calls 60% of these women used to be like this you know like i want to earn money somehow i'm like i'm not going to help you to get a part time job or maybe this you can check out those portals but i'm here to help you build your business to expand your business online if you don't have a skill if you don't have a business idea how i can I, how like how can i help you with this i can help you refine a business but you should have your business you should have your skills and that is how you know the whole qualification process Uh, had a lots of i could say maybe a complete upside down turn and it has come out very nice right now nice nice so if if you see yourself in in the future let let's say 5 years from now right how how would you like your business to be evolved at that moment so 5 years from now first thing i would like to have as i have impacted many mums so that's my desire i really want to ha- help mums to achieve the freedom that i have and in my life in my past four years journey in my business i have gone through a lot and i didn't have mentors that was one of the biggest mistake i had done so i really want to help them save those four years and maybe after five years i want to see a lot of moms who are impacted by me and enjoying the life of freedom and having their 100k years with me at the same time i would like to see me at 100k months as we have everything financially but moreover i want my business to give me more freedom it's like i work one two hours a day but those are quality hours of work and i am impacting more and more lives nice nice and are you also thinking uh, growing a business because currently you are saying you know you want to help your your clients to achieve consistent five month uh, five, figure five figure months, months. Yeah. So any ambition to make that into a six figure month? Yeah, that's that's on my list, but I'm like okay, let me because now the clients I'm getting as they are still struggling to get their first 5k or first 10k. That is why I want to help them to get those first 5k and 10k mark especially and have this consistent five figure months and in 5 years down the line it would definitely be multi six figures months. perfect perfect you know and and the clients you're helping right now to get those consistent five figure months you know they might be your your next clients when you're going to level up your own business yeah um, and you lead by example because you are a mom you know you how to deal with business and uh taking care of your son and giving him all the attention he needs so i think you're doing a wonderful job on that uh, thank you So um how did you, how does this um the reason I'm asking um 
you know, I'm an electrical engineer by education as well. I, uh, I studied on university. Um, so you're a mechanical engineer by education. How does this yeah. help you in your uh, your coaching business and uh, you, your, your marketing business? So as a mechanical engineer, uh, especially when you see the curriculum and all, people may seem, okay, mechanical is all related to automotives or vehicles, but actually it is not. Uh, we learn a lot about operations, you know, how to simplify tasks. There are a lot of calculations that go behind it and all. And uh, having speciality into operations, even during my engineering and working into all those you know, project operations, I got an expertise on simplifying things. Like when people say that I have to create a social media post, I'm like, okay, this is not a task. If task goes like, okay, there's an idea. Then you make a rough layout. Then you write a copy. Then you design the final. Then you get the hashtag. So that simplicity is what I have learned through my engineering and through the job I have done. Like break down every single task that you don't feel it is a huge task. So this is what happens even with my clients when I work today. They come up with something that I really have to build this landing page. And every day they have the same thing. I have to build this landing page. I have to build this landing page. I'm like, don't take that because building a landing page may be five hours work. Just go simple. I have to get idea of the landing page. I have to get copy of the landing page. I have to do the layout of the landing page and then go on taking off these tasks. And then you see that your landing page comes out because every day you just have to take that one task rather than the whole bundle. So this is something mechanical engineering actually taught me to simplify action items so that there's no overwhelm at the end. Nice. And especially that overwhelm is very, uh, very important word because um, you, you, if you have a, a task list, you know, you can have something like, uh, I need to update my website. And that single task, yeah. right, that can be on it for eternally because your website is never done. You know, the moment you're, you're already updated, it's already old. So you have to keep working on it. And as you said, you know, simplifying the task in, in making it bite-sized pieces or which you can can execute in let's say 30 minutes or one hour tops right that makes it uh easier to 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 digest if, if you want to call it that uh, that way you know and and you can you can stripe it off your list and that feels good and when you got all the tasks done suddenly the whole project is done and that's yeah. that's indeed how you. Uh, it's it's the same question as how do you eat an elephant, right? Uh, just little bites at a time. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. So this is what I keep telling my clients: don't think the end task, break it down, break it down. It's gonna help you, and that definitely saves from getting burnt out also. Because we take the whole task, we spend the entire day behind it, nothing gets done. But rather, if it is broken down into small tasks, okay, this is the only thing I have to do. So you don't, you know, like end up spending a lot of time. You do it, then tomorrow you can do the next part. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect example. And it's it's funny because, um, you know, the moment you start your entrepreneurship, you start building a, a different environment around yourself. You know, you're meeting different people, their uh, fellow entrepreneurs, you talk to them. And um, the funny thing that, uh, when I started my business seven years ago and I once uh, gave a presentation of my uh, previous life, you know, when I was still in corporate world and what I did, uh, people were looking uh, amazed that, oh, did, did you do this? And did you did, are, did, are you a master in science and electrical engineering? And all those things that uh, we never thought about uh, that, that you had this background. And, uh, but it, it helps me to run my business as well. You know, it's not, it's not that I'm, uh, do, uh, doing things with electronic stuff, you know, but it's, it's the whole mindset. It's how you decompose problems into simple challenges, you know, solve them so that the, the overall solution, uh, uh, the overall problem gets solved. Uh, it's a helicopter view. It's all those things. It, it's a way of of thinking and learning that I'm still applying to date, even though I, I finished my study, um, well, I'm not lying, uh, 26 years ago. So, 
don't somehow there's this stereotype of an engineer and you don't fit in that that stereotype so you think what well, you're an engineer right that's it doesn't it doesn't make sense to them while if you look at how you apply the the learnings it, it totally makes sense just like you said you know don't f- be overwhelmed by the task at hand just just simplify tasks until you can manage it and that's that's key yeah one thing here when you said about the past experience right so most of the people when they get to know my past as in the first year uh, after engineering i didn't take a corporate job because that wasn't my dream i didn't wanted to go into a big mnc and work out there but i wanted to you know impact people that was my dream always so i had taken a rural internship and i had literally gone to a remote village which was a 50 acres campus and i was staying alone there i was assisting a very renowned scientist here in india so that year i was assisting him on research projects when people get to know this you had such a great opportunity you were assisting someone who has so many awards on his name we can only see his name on wikipedia and you were literally working with him very closely and why did you give that up why did you do engineering if you had to give that up and do something i'm like okay you're not going to understand what it has helped me so working with the scientist has definitely helped me a lot i have in like taken his lifestyle the way he saw things the way he utilized his skills and obviously when he was working on research projects he maybe was not utilizing his mechanical skills but he was trying to help rural people to better their life at and this is something you know like no matter where you go what you learn impacts your journey some or the other way and there are a lot of those learnings which are taken i could say they are more important than any professional education will help you like the experience of it so even though it was mechanical engineering the experience of those four years was worth more than that mechanical engineering certificate i could say yeah i can totally uh imagine how that worked and it's beautiful how does it how does it feel that you uh, as a little girl you had this dream of doing something for yourself and making an Im- impact and currently you're actually living your dream you know how does it feel how does it make you feel if you think about it so firstly if you say that how does it feel i always felt it was impossible because being uh, from a rural village like i am born and brought up in a rural village where i didn't even have access to internet till 10th standard so they may be internet but we don't know we don't have phone and all so i had no idea what to do next and when i went to engineering that was the time when i got you know like okay there is something as internet there is something as instagram there is something as facebook so that when i became like 18 years old i got to know all these things but my desire to have something of my own was right from childhood mm-hmm. and i never knew so when i was talking to my friends they already had so many followers on instagram they were so tech friendly they were so much into this and i was like i don't know anything of it and the life that i wanted i was like it seemed impossible and especially when those you know like placements come and when you have to take up a job and i had got a placement but i didn't wanted it because i wanted something of my own so that was kind of a foolish decision like anyone would say like why do you want to give up that i was look no i want to explore life outside from you know like just to going to a stereotypes job i want to explore life and i did do that i changed nine jobs so that's part of my journey just exploring here and there with the startups but definitely you know like the, those days if you ask me those days back in 2014 this life seemed completely impossible i didn't even know like i had no idea how to use instagram and today i'm training people how to sell on instagram and my first sale way back in 2018 2020 i would say first client so it was an interaction like a coffee chat and i was t- talking on some topic and right after the chat people messaged me i want to work with you i want to work with you i had not expected that i didn't know that people would be interested in working with me and when they asked me what are the charges i had no not, i had no number in mind i was like okay 100 dollars because 100 dollars is a huge amount here in india and mm-hmm. they were like okay fine and they send the money and i was like oh they are paying me so much <laughs> so that things and the way now i realized that 100 dollars was way too less for what i served them 
so the life i'm living now was a dream life for me and i always thought it was impossible but i know that i have achieved it and there's a lot more that i'm expecting now uh, like yeah. those are my desires and i'm very sure that i'm going to achieve those so even though it may feel impossible right now so whenever i feel that it's impossible i always look back at my journey this life also was impossible for me at one time but i'm living it i'm enjoying it today so nice. my future life is also possible for me wonderful and it's it shows that if you have this this dream and this belief that uh, as long as you persevere right you will achieve what you want and that's you're the perfect example of that and it's beautiful to to hear that and to see that as well and it's what you said you know um uh, your something that that seems to be the farthest away from you might become your biggest strength right um yeah. i had the same with um i thought i couldn't sell right that was one of my weaknesses and i have my own advanced sales masterclass now where i teach other people how it works um hypnotherapy was one of the things i would could have never imagined doing and now it's one of my biggest strengths you know that uh, to help transform my my clients so um don't give up on that you know if you have this dream uh, you just feel from the inside that you have to uh, pursue it uh, go for it because at the end you will uh, succeed yeah so here i would just like some stats not the industry standard stats or something but when i started my journey way back in 2018 when i was struggling to figure out there were a lot of my friends who started with me and if you see today i am here and they are like we really want to start something again so over the four years they lost the track somewhere they just went back and they have nothing right now so this perseverance is very very important if you want to achieve something you have to go with it you can't give up no matter what's there in between uh it's always you know your next level is very close than what you think about yeah it reminds me of those pictures you see on social media as well of those um uh... Uh, treasure hunters that are just growing and at a certain point they're returning because they're not finding anything and there's just a small line between them and this great treasure that uh, this treasure that's behind this this wall that they they just had to only hit it once with their axe and they would have gotten there and it's yeah. this image that helps you you know to to persevere because you never know that success can be around the corner you just have to take the turn yeah exactly this is what i believe in and whenever i feel uh, kind of demotivated so i just go up to my mentors and i see their past and their present i'm like okay they have done it i can definitely do it yeah perfect perfect um asmita we can talk for hours on those subjects i guess and helping others yeah. it's such a great feeling um if you could share just one more tip or little piece of wisdom with the audience what would that be So one most important thing that I have learned from my mistakes and from my journey is always seek from support from your mentors. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Don't just try to wear all the hats. Seek support wherever it's required and it is a must if you want to follow your passion. And never give up on following your passion with taking this support. Perfect. And it's 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 I I'm not sure how it is in India but at least in Netherlands I know uh some uh, sometimes it's it seems like people are ashamed of asking asking yes. for help asking for guidance asking for testimonial or whatever while if you don't ask you'll never get it so it's better to ask uh, because i always say there are no such things as stupid questions there are enough stupid answers but the only stupid question that exists is the one you didn't ask Yeah. So uh, that's something that we have to almost have to learn again, you know, to start asking for things. And it's just what you said, you know, ask for support because uh, the wheel has already been invented. So why try to invent it uh, another time, right? Yeah. So here in India also is the same case. People don't ask for support. They feel that they will be, you know, considered that inferior if they're asking for support. Uh, i was of the same thoughts but now i know no you can ask every stupid question you may feel it is stupid but your mentors know that it is the right question because they have gone through the same things exactly yeah that's right so if people want to know more about you or want to get in touch with you asmita how can they do that 
Yeah, so the best thing to reach me is my Instagram. So my name is Asmita Jason on Instagram. I'm very active on my Instagram. And uh, I'm active on Facebook as well. It's the same uh, profile name there on LinkedIn also. Uh, it's the same name on all the socials, but Instagram is the best way to reach out to me and because I check it every often. And other than that, it could be my website. It's asmitajason.com. So you will find all the resources, freebies, the masterclasses, everything at one place. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Asmita, I had a great time. Uh, thank you for sharing your story and your, your journey as well. It's wonderful to see how you've uh, how you've grown, and uh, I would say let's keep up the good work and let's stay in touch. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot for having me here. It was really a great time to be with you. Go back on my journey and see that visualization effect right now. Thanks a lot, and I'll definitely be in touch, and we'll continue this journey ahead together. I hope you liked this episode. Make sure to check out the other episodes because each one is filled with interesting and inspiring stories and energy. Are you following your passion as well and make a good living out of it? Contact me and you could be my next guest. Would you like to follow your passion but are not there yet? Check out my website millionairelifestrategy.com and book an appointment to discover what I could do for you. Don't forget to share the podcast with your friends so that they get inspired as well. 